guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a very, very highly requested video, which is how I got my newborn to sleep through the night. But before I get into today's video, if you are new here, hello, my name is Chelsea. I am a first time mom to a almost five month old baby girl named Penelope. I do motherhood related videos, a little bit of lifestyle um, and some vlogs. So if you enjoy those kind of videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel before you leave and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy. So also just a little disclaimer before I get into it, I am no sleep consultant. I did not take any sleep courses. Um, I don't even know if I consider what I did with Penelope sleep training exactly. Um, I'm just a first time mom who wanted her daughter to sleep through the night. So I think this video is just gonna be more informative if you are um, a new mom and you're just looking, or mom in general I should say, but you're gonna have a baby soon and you're looking for tips to kind of instill in them to help them sleep better throughout the night when you do bring your newborn baby home. So with all that being said, let's get right into the video. Okay, so I'm gonna start from the beginning. Um, if you don't follow me or you haven't followed my journey with Penelope we did come home from the hospital after being in the hospital for about a week because she was born pretty tiny um, amongst a couple other things that we had to kind of overcome before coming home if you haven't seen my labor and delivery story I'll link it up here for you guys if you want to check that out after but when we were in the hospital she slept great I had to wake her to feed her but other than that she was just you know a really sleepy little newborn which for the most part that's how they are until you bring them home and then they're like wait what's going on so the first night we brought her home it was rough basically she did not want to sleep i was up with her every single hour um and so that was like just so so exhausting i feel you guys if you're going through it now it does pass like what made me get through it was just knowing that everything is temporary like all those kind of hard moments are temporary but oh my god it was really rough with that being said i knew that her being so little i didn't really want to start implementing many things to make her sleep better just because one i had to get up and feed her um throughout the night and to, you know, when they're that little, there's not many that many things that you can do, I think at least in my opinion, to make them sleep that much longer because they're just, you know, they're gonna do their own thing. They're so tiny and they're just wanting to eat, poop, sleep at their own pace and time basically. So what I decided to do was basically let her sleep in my arms in the, you know, during the day. And I just wanted to soak that all in. I didn't really care about a schedule or just anything like that besides getting her up from sleeping every two hours to feed her because I wanted her to you know eat if I didn't wake her up she was not waking up but um, that's because she was obviously sleeping in my arms and babies just love to sleep and be cuddled in your arms but she would not wake up unless I woke her up so I would have to wake her up to feed her but other than that I let her sleep in my arms the entire like almost first month of her life and I don't regret that I encourage you to do you know the same or something similar because it's just like very much a bonding time for you and your baby. I totally get if you have more than one kid or this is not your first kid and you have a toddler running around like you can't sit on the couch and just hold your baby forever. But the moments that you can, I think it's totally worth it just to have that bonding time because before you know it, you're putting them for naps in their crib and you don't really get that anymore. So at about three and a half weeks in, almost four weeks in, I decided I wanted to slowly try to put her in her crib to take naps. So this was like my first step in just getting her sleep trained or getting her used to taking naps other ways besides me holding her. So I started to do that very slowly. I put her in her crib for one nap a day and then a couple days later maybe it was two naps a day and then when I felt comfortable I started putting her in her crib for every single nap. Um, except her last nap of the day just because I wanted to hold her and still bond with her especially because from in my case I was supposed to go back to work six weeks after she was born, which is insane I will definitely not do that the next time I'll definitely want to take more time off But that's besides the point so after she was taking her naps in her crib It was going really well obviously because they're still so little they don't really know what's going on It started changing about the five week mark and I noticed that she wouldn't take as long of naps back then like back when I first started three four weeks in she would you know sleep two hours no problem but then at about five weeks she started kind of 
understanding what was going on. She was going through a leap, and so she wasn't taking as long of naps. So that's when I started implementing wake windows. So this is my next big tip. Wake windows are super important. So if you don't know what a wake window is, a wake window is basically how long your baby, your child, your infant should be awake before they go down for their naps. They're at that time in between their naps that they should be awake. Um, I'll put up a little kind of graph here for you guys to look at, and I'll link some down below if I find any other ones, but this is the one I followed. And basically, I would keep her up as long as I possibly could in that wake window before I would put her down for her nap. Um, again, wake windows is one of the most important things in my opinion because you don't want to put down an overtired baby and you don't want to put down a baby that's not ready to go for down for their nap because again, this can affect their naps. And I can go into naps in a whole other video where actually having a little four month sleep regression happens. So our naps have been a struggle, but I'm very consistent and persistent. So I'm confident that she will get better at her naps again but anyway that's again for another video if you guys are interested but basically you just want to pay attention to those wake windows so with that being said that also goes hand in hand with the schedule that i followed so again i didn't do like a specific sleep training i call it more of like a schedule which i'm all about i love schedules i love planning i like to know what's coming next so the schedule that i followed was the sleep eat play schedule um, and this is going back to like my main resource which is taking care of babies she's a um, I think she used to be like a, a nurse or a nighttime nurse or a labor and delivery nurse and she teaches this course that you can take and pay for but I decided just to see if I can get as many tips as I could from her through her Instagram and kind of take it from there, which is what I did. I did not pay for the course. If you are really struggling, I think you should pay for the course and try it out because it's not that expensive. And I think that she does have a lot of helpful tips just from the free information. So I'm sure she does have a lot of helpful tips through the paid kind of option. So her whole thing is the sleep, um, eat play schedule where they take their naps so again i was putting her down in her crib for her naps they would last about an hour an hour and a half at most two hours and then if they did go any longer than two hours i would wake her up because i didn't want her to get too much sleep in during the day then she wouldn't be that tired at night um so then at that point i would wake her up or if she slept only an hour an hour and a half then she would wake up then I would get her up, change her, feed her, and have her up for the wake window that we discussed earlier, that I talked to you guys about earlier. And I would just play with her on her playtime mat or her tummy time mat. I would sing to her, I would walk around the apartment with her, anything just to keep her up, I would do. And then I would put her down for her nap and the whole cycle would repeat all day. Again, during that cycle, I am following her wake windows appropriate to her age. And I am not feeding her before I put her down because I wanted her to be able to go down by herself. Like I didn't want to have to feed her in order for her to fall asleep. The only time I did that or still do that is at night right before I put her down because the more full she is, the better. You want your baby to get in those nice, you know, good feedings throughout the day. That way they're not as hungry at night, which can definitely be a little easier if they're formula fed, but I did it and I breastfed her and I'm still breastfeeding her and she's still sleeping through the night to this day. Even with her four month sleep regression, she just had like a couple of hiccups for maybe less than a week she didn't sleep that great at night and then now she's right back to sleeping you know nine plus hours eight i should say eight plus hours a night but that does bring me to another point um with those naps and with putting her down i always had kind of ways of letting her know that it was time for a nap so she would play for a little bit and then i would pick her up and kind of get her like out of that stimulation stimulating situation so that i'm not grabbing her from being super stimulated, playing on a mat to just straight into the crib because one thing I learned from researching is like, think about it as an adult. If you're, you know, doing something like crazy, like hanging out at a club and then somebody's like, okay, go to bed right now. You're like, wait, my brain is still, you know, going. So I would pick her up and just kind of hold her for like another five minutes so just so she can just calm down a little bit and then I would put her down. And again, this comes gets into my next point, which is I would do things to make her know that it is time for her nap. Um, like swaddling her, giving her her pacifier, putting on a sound machine and making the room dark. All those things helped tremendously. I do have to say a little disclaimer, which I'm going through now with this four month sleep regression is they do tend to get a little bit dependent on those things if they want to, if they are gonna be put down for a nap, they tend to like want those things. So if you're out somewhere 
it might get a little bit more difficult to put them down if they don't have like the sound machine, um, the swaddle, all those kind of things. So just keep that in mind. But I do think in the beginning and I, is worth it and I still don't regret doing those things to let her know that it is now time for her nap because at this point I can just put her down and she goes right to sleep because she knows. So those things are super important, like I said, but um, I know a lot of people have issues finding swaddles that work for their baby or their babies don't like to be swaddled or their babies don't like certain pacifiers. I encourage you to try and find a swaddle that works for your baby or pacifier that works for your baby if that's what you want to do. Again, you don't have to do anything I'm saying. I'm just giving you guys advice from what I've gone through. Um, she did not like to be swaddled with her hands down. She only liked her hands up, even in the womb. So I finally found a swaddle that she liked, which is the Love to Dream one. I'll link it down below for you guys. Swaddles their hands up by their face and she did super well with that. Probably within a couple days, she was doing amazing. Um, taking a little bit longer naps and of course that goes into the schedule that I implemented as well but her being swaddled that way really comforts her so now we're having a little bit of an issue trying to get her arms out because now she's rolling and she needs to be out of a swaddle but again that's something that you can cross that bridge when you get there um, and again the same thing with the pacifier she did not like any of those cute like bibs pacifiers I tried like literally like four or five before she finally took one that she really liked and oh my god what a lifesaver um, again when it comes to naps I know a lot of people have questions about putting her down and do you go in there do you rock her do you constantly um, keep trying to put her down even if she doesn't want to stay down. That I can go into a whole other video because this video will literally be 30 minutes long and it's just, it'll be too long. But I can go into that in another video of what I did and what I do. If you guys are interested, just let me know in the comments. So basically I would say about week six, so about a week or two, um, six or seven of implementing her eat, play, or I'm sorry, play, eat. Oh my goodness, I do this every single time. Sleep? eat play schedule she started to sleep better at night longer stretches so she went from sleeping every or waking up every couple hours to waking up every three hours and then at one point she woke up like after six hours and it was only two times a night she was waking up right around the eight week mark she did her first like seven almost eight hour stretch and i'm telling you we never looked back like after she did it once then she just kept doing it. So, except for this, like I said, this four month sleep regression. For the most part, she went right back. And I am hopeful that this four month sleep regression will get better because I put in this foundation from the beginning. So, just a little side note there. Another thing that I wanna mention is when your baby does cry, when you do put them down, I don't do the Ferber method, I don't do the cry it out method per se. If you wanna do those methods, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I just wanted to try my way first and so my way is if she does cry I will wait I don't go right in right away especially I can see her on the monitor I know she's okay so I will wait um, and then I will see how it goes if she seems like she's really getting fussy or if she seems like she's gonna kind of turn around and go to sleep but you as a parent you know your baby you know what they're gonna kind of do more or less so I would say just Kind of try to play it by ear. Don't go in right away when they cry, especially at night. Um, she will sometimes fuss. They they get up sometimes and you think they're like awake, but they're really not. They're just like talking or moving in their sleep. And occasionally I'll reach over, put the pacifier in if she's really getting fussy and she'll go right to sleep. So that doesn't happen all the time. Uh, last night didn't happen at all. She just slept all the way until six. And then I tried the pacifier thing and she wasn't having it. But I, at that point she already had slept through the night. So I knew that it was probably like her wanting to get up for the day. Then I fed her and I wasn't ready. So I fed her and I put her back down and she slept like an extra hour and a half. So I would say be mindful of that as well not rushing to go in and um, pick them up and all that if they start to cry. Try to see if they'll put themselves down or back to sleep on their own. Last couple things before I end this video, I just wanted to go over a couple apps that I use just to make my life a little easier. I get this question all the time as well, so I figured I'd throw it in here, but I do have the um, Wonder Weeks app and that's gonna help you kind of find out when they're going through their developmental leaps, which can cause little sleep regressions, which can cause them to be cranky and all that stuff. So that tends to help me because I know it's not really something I'm doing. It's kind of something that she's going through if something happens with her sleep. And then the other app that I use is the Huckleberry app. Huck the Huckleberry app is amazing because 
you can track pretty much everything in there from when you give them medicine to when they go down to sleep for the night to feedings whether you're breastfeeding formula feeding doesn't matter poops peas everything um, and the coolest thing about them is that once you start tracking things in there they will give you wake windows that your baby is meant to go down for. So for example, I'll pull up a screenshot here or a screen share here for you guys. So Penelope has been sleeping for 49 minutes. I have the timer going. And if I go in here, you can see feeding, diaper, pumping, medicine, everything. And then on the top, you can see where it says 56 minutes ago, nap time near 1150. So when you start generating her or kind of documenting, I should say her naps and her sleep schedule and everything in the app, they will give you a time that they think she should be going down for her nap. And from what I've compared it to, to the kind of chart that I go off for wake windows, it's pretty much right in there. It's always an estimate, but she's always pretty much ready to go down right when they say, and it keeps changing as they get older as well. Cause obviously as they get older, their wake windows widen. So I did want to just mention that app as well. Okay, I think that's everything. If I forgot anything, I'm going to leave it in the description box. Um, because again, I don't have, I kind of was just going like off the top of my head. But if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions. If I didn't explain something 100%, please leave it down below. I will answer you. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave if you like videos like this. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.